Oh, hello there. Didn't see you there, you lovable little scamp. Welcome to Afternoons with Yammy Noob. I am your host, Krusty Cubes, Flappy Boobs, the one illustrious Yammy Noob. And you might be saying, hey, this isn't the afternoon. You release these videos five times per week at 11.30 a.m. because you're the most consistent and best channel on YouTube. And you'd be right, you cutie pie. Thanks for stopping by the hottest place for motorcycle content. Is it content? Is it the yams? What is it that makes it the absolute hottest channel on YouTube? I just don't know. Maybe it's our unrelenting commitment to quality, our free motorcycle giveaways, or my extremely shiny dome. Who can say? I've been seeing a lot of comments lately asking about beginner bikes, and more specifically, what types of bikes are the best. While I think choosing a bike is a very personal decision, much like choosing a spouse, today I'm gonna outline some basic details for some of the more popular styles you might run into. Now, this isn't a complete rundown by any means, but hopefully it's going to help you narrow down what you're looking for. Because what I find more often than anything else is guys and gals thinking they want one style of motorcycle, only to swing a leg over something completely different and fall in love. Hint, it's torque. That's what makes bikes super fun. It helps if they're more upright too. Comfortable ergonomics and torque equals a great bike, just like our FZ07. After that, the choice is completely in their hands, and of course, if you feel I left out any pros or cons, feel free to drop them in the comment area below. Now, if everyone will pause the argument for who was here first, let's get started, because you're all first in my heart. Just kidding, suckers. There's no participation trophies here on Yami Noob. You're either first or you're last. First, I want to look at sport bikes. These things are mean. They are built for maximum performance with a focus on speed. They are lightweight, have plastic fairings most of the time, and are great for track days. Sport bikes and their sister super sport bikes are racing machines. They're fast, aggressive motorcycles that are extremely responsive. They are also the least forgiving of all the bikes we're going to look at today. But man, they are good looking. Look at those angles, the aerodynamics, the curves on that gas tank. Before I get too carried away, let's look at the primary complaint about sport bikes. Now, it is true that they have the most uncomfortable riding position of all the bikes we are going to be looking at. These babies are not loaded down with comfort providing bells and whistles, so they probably aren't a great choice for an everyday bike. But then again, Turbo Busa. But the important thing to remember is that not all fully fared bikes are made equally. You have something like a Honda CBR650R and a Honda CBR600RR. While they might look very similar and sound very similar, they have full fairings, four cylinder engines, a Honda badge, they really couldn't be more different. The RR is made for carving up racetracks, while the CBR650R is made for street duty. If you look closely, the key difference is in the ergonomics, or in normie speak, the relationship between the seat height, handlebars, and foot pegs. You'll notice the 600 is that classic gargoyle-like seating position designed for you to be in a full race tuck all the time, where the 650R is much more approachable and comfortable, so keep this in mind. The cool thing is if you want a super sexy sport bike looks, you don't have to sacrifice for those ergonomics. Something like the Ducati Super Sport, for example, is going to give you all the street cred you want while still being a comfortable bike to ride. Yes, sport bikes and super sports are sexy, fast, and built for racing, but don't let all that speed go to your head. Before you commit to a bike, make sure you have taken the time to really consider the type of riding you want to do. If you're looking for a motorcycle to commute to work, take a road trip on, or sit comfortably on for more than 30 minutes, this probably isn't the bike for you. Although, to be fair, I commuted on my Daytona for a while and it was awesome, so maybe you're a complete degenerate like me. If, however, you are looking for a track bike you can haul on, then this is definitely the bike for you. Moving on, let's check out some naked bodies. Not those kind, these kind. Naked bikes are a hybrid between sport bikes and a commuter bike, a not sport sport bike. Something like that, I'll work on it. Anyway, unlike a sport bike, naked bikes do not have fairings. They offer a more comfortable seating position. They have enough speed and power that they're fun on the track, but the more comfortable ride makes them more reasonable for commuting. These bikes are also called standard style motorcycles because they offer a glimpse of power but a comfortable commute as well. Naked bikes make an excellent starter bike for riders who aren't sure of themselves yet. These bikes are great for anyone really, but it's pretty cool that they offer the quasi-aggressive look of a sport bike without the aggressive responsiveness, unless you have an FC09 and that throttle's really twitchy. That's going to place them squarely on my list of favorite bikes for beginner riders depending on the size and engine. Personally, I think naked bikes are the best of all worlds for a street motorcycle and the occasional canyon carver slash track day weapon. Naked bikes rule. And don't just take my word for it, but ask Zach Quartz and Ari Henning what they think of naked bikes. They did a whole video comparing them to full-on sport bikes. Hell, ask any motorcyclist who's been around the block for a little bit. A properly set up naked bike is a thing of beauty. Something like Triumph Street Triple or Yamaha FC09 or the Aprilia 2 is going to provide you with bucket loads of torque and fun, which I love both of those things, so that works out. Now, 
Maybe you're interested in the freedom that riding a motorcycle offers, but you are more interested in off-road riding. If that's your wheelhouse, then you're going to want to check out one of these next bikes. For a completely off-road riding experience, a dirt bike is going to be perfectly suited for your riding needs. They've got great suspension with lots of travel, which makes all those rocks and potholes you're going to hit hurt significantly less than they would otherwise. They also sit much higher than other bikes since they offer more clearance. This allows you to traipse around the wilderness without damaging your bike. They usually come with a uh, scuff guard as well. These babies are made to handle just about anything you can find out there in mother nature, but they are absolutely not street legal. Dirt bikes don't have headlights, blinkers, or mirrors. They don't meet road safety regulations, so while they're lots of fun, you need to keep it off the streets and in the dirt, unless you do a conversion. Now, that's because a proper dirt bike, not a dual sport and ADV bike, as we're going to mention later, is basically a motocross bike. Something like a YZ450F isn't sold with headlights, for example. And it's going to need its valves adjusted based on hours of usage, even though supermoto dudes tell me this isn't a big deal. Now, if you like being able to go off-roading but you want to hit the pavement as well, then something like a dual sport and adventure bike is going to be a better fit for you. You might also hear the term scrambler thrown into the ring, and if you're interested, check out the video I did about scramblers by clicking the pop-out card right up here. A dual sport is essentially a street-legal dirt bike. You get your dirt bike essentials with a headlight and some sets of blinkers to make her street-legal. Essentially, you get the best of both worlds, and the wheelie potential of these bikes is off the charts. The engines are also typically detuned for the street, and they don't need their valves adjusted constantly. An adventure bike or an ADV bike is more of a luxury style dirt bike. The adventure bikes sit up high like a dirt bike so they're going to be better suited for taller riders. They have a more comfortable seating than dirt bikes since they're meant for both street and off-road usage. But clearance options and off-road capabilities are pretty comparable. Although serious dirt bike riders might bemoan the fact that ADV bikes are not able to compete with the likes of something like a YZ450 and they'd be right. The ADV is more expensive than a dirt bike too and like most motorcycles things can get really expensive really fast on these. So a beginner rider probably isn't going to be interested in throwing down the kind of cash it takes to get something nice, a BMW GS for example. Especially not when you can take that same amount and get a high-end version of something else. Now, if off-road riding isn't your style, maybe you're interested in taking longer rides, road trips, long commutes, etc. Now, for those kind of rides, you're going to want to check out a touring cruiser or a sport touring motorcycle. Cruisers are built for long rides, so manufacturers place priority on comfort rather than speed. These bikes have a lot of power and really big engines. They're heavier than the previous bikes we talked about, but they are also one of the most forgiving bikes for beginner riders to learn on. Unless you're talking something like a Harley V-Rod or a Yamaha V-Max, you know, those are definitely not appropriate for beginners. They've got a lower center of gravity so they're easier to control and basic steering maneuvers on. Because the steering and handling are so forgiving, a lot of motorcycle safety courses actually use Cruiser for student lessons. Cruisers also have a very distinct aesthetic, so if that's the look you want, the Cruiser is the one you're going to have to go to find it. Next up is the Touring Motorcycle. Now this is sort of the Rolls Royce of Cruisers. These guys are outfitted with all the saddlebags and extra storage you can handle. They're built for ultra comfortable riding and are the perfect motorcycle for the rider who wants to take serious road trips on his favorite bike. Something like a Honda Gold wing, for example. So much like a cruiser, touring bikes are built with a focus on comfort over speed, so while they do have a lot of power, they're also incredibly heavy, which means they're not going to be the quick accelerating machines you get when you ride a lighter bike. Touring bikes are some of the most expensive bikes out there as well. They usually have a built-in navigation system, on-screen stereo systems, and any bell and whistle you can think of. I think one of them even has a cup holder. Someone let me know in the comments below. I'm pretty sure one of these bikes have a cup holder. Because their prices, these bikes probably aren't great for someone just starting out unless you're retirement age. In that case, have at it. The last bike I want to look at is the Sport Touring. This is another hybrid beauty that offers most of the comfort and features of a touring bike, but with a smaller price tag. Sport Touring motorcycles are smaller than a regular touring motorcycle and have some of the aggressive styling that a sport bike has. Think something like the Kawasaki Versus, for example. Like a standard motorcycle or the Naked Bikes, Sport Tourings offer the comfort of a touring bike and a lighter, more responsive, more affordable package. You won't find all the upgrades and accessories that a normal touring bike has on a Sport Touring, but because of that sport tourings are lighter and faster than full-fledged touring bikes. This is going to be a nice middle ground for someone who enjoys the look of a sport bike but who wants something more comfortable that cruisers and tourings offer. They're kind of down in the middle and have a much nicer price tag. I kind of liken sport touring bikes to be the jack of all trades of motorcycles. And as a famous cartoon character once said, that's all folks. 
thanks for checking out my latest video and being a gamey supporter. Big things are happening this year and I'm excited to share all of the adventures coming my way with you. We've got something really special coming later in April and as a hint, it rhymes with La Rez and it involves me going fast with a bunch of bikes, so stay tuned for that. I've got some sneak peeks going on over at my Instagram, so be sure to follow me over there at Yammy Noob. And last but not least, we are giving away a free motorcycle here on Yammy Noob. Yes, you heard that correctly. There is an FZ07 up for grabs and it will simply not last very long. Hit the link below to learn how you can enter for free or if you'd like to learn how to sign up and support the series which earns you additional chances to win, entry to product giveaways from our sponsors, and you get to hang out in the promised land of our Discord server with me. Seriously, that's the best benefit. Existing patrons will tell you how they hang out with me all the time. That's gonna do it for today. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Fact. OJ Simpson was originally cast to play the Terminator, but the studio was afraid that no one would buy him as a remorseless killer. Ironic. Goodbye.